So let us talk about the principles of oncology. This is one of the most important topics regarding general surgery. So before going into the principles, let me explain what a cell cycle is, how a cell cycle moves in a direction that it becomes a carcinoma. So cell cycle is defined as a series of events that take place within a cell leading to its division and replication to produce daughter cells. It has different phases which includes G1 phase, S phase, G2 phase and M phase. Though all these phases has a specific detail but I will not go into that. Now, there are two types of genes which are very important in terms of understanding the concept of a carcinoma. Proto-oncogenes which promote cell division and the tumor suppressor genes that suppress the cell division. Now if there is a normal balance between these two genes, a normal cell cycle will proceed. But if by any mutation or any reason there is a increase in the proto-oncogenes or by any means there is a decrease in the tumor suppressor gene, the cell cycle will have an imbalance and it will proceed towards the carcinoma. Now talking about the definition of a neoplasia or carcinoma, it is defined as formation of new tissue that is unregulated and irreversible. Now whenever a normal stem cell divides, it has normal DNA because of any reason if the DNA of the stem cell gets disrupted it will form a cancerous cell now by disruption we mean mutation and more divisions more mutation for the prognosis and more ability to invade so these are the basic principles if we have a strong grasp of these concepts we can understand carcinoma because carcinoma is one of the most important and most common pathology now let us talk about the hallmarks of a cancerous cells the, the carcinoma cell will resist the signals that will inhibit its growth it will evade apoptosis by the loss of tumor suppressor gene now tumor suppressor gene presence of them is responsible for killing the cell when it shifts towards the carcinoma side the carcinoma cell will obtain immortality and this is by means of rebuilding the telomerase now telomerase is present at the end of a chromosome with each division telomerase is reduced but if the telomerase is rebuilt the cell will have the ability to divide more so by rebuilding the telomerase the cancerous cells keep on dividing and keep on proliferating then they also acquire angiogenic properties they start developing in that locality where they are present some blood vessels around them so that they can acquire nutrition from the surrounding tissue then they acquire the ability to invade and this is by means of expressing integrins on their surfaces. Integrins are the proteins which are present on the cell surface by which the cells attach to the other cells. So by expressing integrins, the cells acquire the ability to move from one place to another and invade within or into the deeper portion of that organ. Then the cancerous cells evade the elimination by the immunity of our body. They also develop genomic instability. By this we mean more the mutations, more than stability, more crazy the cell becomes. So carcinoma is a term which is synonymous with being mad. So a cancerous cell is mad. The more mutation, more instability means more madness the cell acquires. Now, carcinoma can be caused by a number of causes. They include, they include environmental, viral, genetic, hormonal, and many more. In the environmental factors, smoking, alcohol, and UV radiation are top of the list. Then, human papilloma virus, HIV, and hepatitis B virus, which is uh, notorious for causing hepatocellular carcinoma. Regarding genetic factors, APC gene is responsible for causing colorectal carcinoma. BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations are responsible for causing breast carcinoma. Then, diet and hormonal factors are also responsible for causing carcinoma. All of the characteristics of a cancerous cell arise as a result of mutation. So, mutation is the key point on which whole study of carcinoma is based upon. The rationale behind prevention is that prevention is better than cure. By avoiding smoking, radiation exposure, we can avoid carcinoma. In case of a family history, a prophylactic surgery 
will be ideally needed to prevent carcinoma. Now further talking about screening. Screening processes are very important so that we can identify patients who are liable to develop a carcinoma later in their life and we can provide them with better health care facilities so that we can treat them properly. The rationale for screening is that less the mutation, smaller will be the lesion, lesser will be the chance of her spread and better the prognosis and treatment. But for screening to be performed, there are specific criteria not only for the disease but for the test and the whole program. This criteria includes for the disease, disease should be recognizable at its early stage, it should be common in a community, effective treatment should be available at an early stage. Talking about the test, it should be sensitive, specific, safe, cheap, acceptable and easily available. Talking about the program, there should be adequate diagnostic facilities for a positive test, there should be high quality treatment available for the disease it should be repeated at regular intervals and their benefits should be more as compared to harms now let us talk about the grading of a tumor by grading of a tumor we mean estimate of aggressiveness of the tumor based upon the serological differentiation there are three types well differentiated tumor moderately differentiated tumor and poorly differentiated tumor as we go down the lane differentiation decreases and aplasia increases the most common staging used for a tumor, TNM staging, and T is for the size of the primary tumor, N is for the regional lymph nodes, and M is for metastasis. Now talking about investigations, there are two primary aims of all the investigations done for any carcinoma, and they include to confirm the histological type as well as serological differentiation of that specific carcinoma, and second aim is to find the extent of the disease and spread so that a proper management plan can be made. So number one, the diagnostic investigations. A key point to be noted, always move in logical order from simple to complex investigation. For staging investigations, they help to find the extent of the local disease, to help define a correct treatment plan, and to help find the proper prognosis. Talking about tumor markers. Tumor markers are biochemical substances which are detected in the serum of that patient and their different types. They include cell surface antigens. They could be cytoplasmic proteins, enzymes, or hormones. Tumor markers cannot be used used as a primary modality for establishing a diagnosis, they only support the diagnosis. Talking about the significance of tumor markers, they include, they can be used for screening, for supporting a diagnosis, they can be used in terms of a prognostic indicator, they are used for monitoring the therapy, and also they can be used for early diagnosis for a relapse of the disease. Important tumor markers include immunoglobulins which are used for multiple myeloma, alpha fetal protein for teratoma, PSA for prostatic carcinoma, CEA for colon and pancreatic carcinoma, CA125 for ovarian carcinoma.